Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our virtual classroom. Um, so today we're going to be going over the area of parallelograms, the area of parallelograms. Now, what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is anything like a square or a rectangle, squares, uh, rectangles, a piece of paper, uh, and also things such as rhombi or rhombus. And, uh, and you'll see several different examples. But before we go into that, I want, do want to review the difference between area and perimeter, the difference between area and perimeter. So as we can see here, perimeter, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can be thought of as the length or the distance around a figure, the distance uh, around a figure. In fact, the prefix peri literally means around. So we're looking at the outside. And then meter obviously means length or measure. So perimeter is a round of a figure. And if you're given a parallelogram, such as a rectangle, like the one that we see here, notice that uh, here we see four meters by five meters. And then since we're measuring around, we need to measure this distance, which is also four, and then this distance, which is also five. So if I were to measure the distance around this figure, the perimeter would be four plus five plus four plus five, or uh, five plus five plus four plus four is the exact same thing. And so the distance around or the perimeter of this rectangle would be 18 meters. All right, again, that is perimeter. Now, uh, before I continue, this is a parallelogram. And as you can see in the word parallelogram, uh, we see the word parallel. And parallel simply means that uh, it's, it's two lines that, if they were to be stretched out, they would never touch. They're going in the exact same direction. And so in a parallelogram, it, it's a four-sided figure where opposite sides are parallel. So if you can see here, uh, these two sides, the top and the bottom, uh, if I were to stretch them out forever, they would never touch. So those sides are parallel. And I can do the same thing with the vertical sides. If I take this side and this side, again, if I were to stretch them out forever, they would never touch touch, they are parallel. And in a parallelogram, the opposite sides will always be the same length. So what that means is that if this is five meters, then the opposite side has to be the exact same uh, length, which is five. If this is four, this is four. So we add all of them up, we get 18. Now area, area is uh, different. Area is talking about the space inside of a figure. Right, the actual definition for area is the number of square units that a figure covers. You're literally seeing how many little squares fit inside of a shape. Uh, and that's how we measure the space inside of a figure. All right, so the formula for the area of a parallelogram, ladies and gentlemen, is just base times height. Now you may have heard it as length times width in elementary school. It's essentially the same thing. Really all of what you're doing is that you are taking um, everything of, of uh, the measurement of the width of a figure, so in this case would be four, and you are multiplying that by the length. So four times one, two, three, four, five, would give me 20 square meters, 20 square meters. You can also look at it this way. Uh, you can take five squares going down, one, two, three, four, five, and doing that four times, one, two, three, four. As long as you're multiplying uh, the entire, width by the entire length. Notice that at any point, the length is four, at any point, the width is five. So you can think of this as the base times the height, base times height. You can also do this as the base and this as the height. It really doesn't matter. But ladies and gentlemen, as long as you're multiplying uh, the vertical component by the horizontal, sorry, the horizontal component by the vertical component. All right. So the base, I mean, the area of this shape would be 20 square meters. Now, notice that the units is not just 20 meters. It's not like I'm taking a string that is 20 meters long and wrapping it around. No, it literally means that there's 20 meters that are squares uh, inside this, uh, this shape. So that is area. So let's talk a little bit more about parallelograms, specifically the area of parallelograms. So again, a parallelogram, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is a shape where the opposite sides are parallel, like we see in a rectangle, like we see in a square, but also like what you see in a rhombus. And a rhombus, ladies and gentlemen, um, looks a lot like a diamond, something like this. But what makes a rhombus a rhombus is that the lengths 
are the exact same. So this was three meters. This would also be three meters. This would also be three meters. And this top part would also be three meters. This is a rhombus. So think of it as a square where all the sides are the same, but that somebody sat on it. So now it's slanted. So that's what it makes a rhombus a rhombus. Um, and then obviously you have parallelograms like the one that we have down here. This is not a rhombus. This is not a square. This is not a rectangle. This is just a parallelogram. That's just what you would call that because opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are the same length. So whenever you see a parallelogram, again, the formula for that is going to be base times height. So we need to see what the base is and what the height are and then multiply them together. So in this shape, we can see that our base is eight, eight. And I could say that this is the base. It doesn't matter, uh, but uh, the bases will always be parallel to one another. Now you don't have to take both of them. You just take one of them because again, you're just measuring the distance from here to here. And at any point, wherever you measure it, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be eight. So here is the horizontal component, eight. And I have to multiply that by the height. Now the height, ladies and gentlemen, is actually four. Because height, ladies and gentlemen, will always be the shortest distance between the bases. So if these are the bases, then the height has to be this distance from here to here. And the shortest distance between those is four. Now, some of you might think, well, wouldn't it be five? Look, this is five. And you're right, the side here is five inches. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not the shortest distance between the bases, okay? Think of it as a diving board. If you were standing at the very top of this diving board up here, let's say that this was five feet and you were to jump off into the water, would you fall sideways along the five or would you fall straight down? You would obviously fall straight down and the distance from here to here is four. It's actually a shorter distance uh, than it is if you were to go sideways. So again, the height will always be uh, straight up and down. In fact, the way that we say that is that it is perpendicular. The base and the height will always be perpendicular to each other, which means that they will make a 90 degree angle. So as you can see here, if I were to draw, this is not an actual part of the rectangle, I mean of the par parallelogram, but if I were to just take the measurement from here to here, you can see that this would make a 90 degree angle. All right, so again, the base and the height will always be perpendicular to each other, which means that when they meet, they will make a 90 degree angle, all right? So again, the distance from the base, or we should take a ruler and just measure up so that it's perfectly level with the height, that would be four inches, and that makes a 90 degree angle. So my base is eight, my height is four, so that would be an area of 32 square inches or inches squared. Look at this example over here. Here again, we have a parallelogram. And notice that in this parallelogram, the bases are on the side. These are the measurements that are given to me. Here are the bases, all right? And the length of the bases is nine, nine. And the height has to be the shortest distance between those. So that would be a straight line, a perpendicular line to the bases. So it's perpendicular, that's what the square means, um, which is also nine meters. So base times height would be nine times nine, nine times nine. Now, Mr. Lugo, what about the 10 here? Well, the 10 is the distance of this line right here, but that I'm not taking that as the base. I'm not taking that as the base. Why not? Because I am not given the height. I'm not given this distance here. I would need to have this distance here and I would have to know what that is for me to be able to use 10 times whatever this height would be. So I'm just going to use what they gave me. If they gave me this side, I'm going to treat that as the base. And I know that this distance is 9, so 9 times 9 is 81. Now, in our assignment today, ladies and gentlemen, or as some examples that we can see here, notice that in all of these uh, parallelograms, I'm given uh, the height. And the height is usually some distance that seems to be crossing the shape. All right, now that is not part of the shape. That is just as if you took a tape measure and you were measuring from one of the bases to the other. So in this first example, we need to get the perimeter, the perimeter of this shape. So that would be adding the outside. So that would be eight plus five plus eight plus five. Because again, perimeter means the distance around. So eight plus five plus eight plus five. So five plus five is 10 
plus eight plus eight uh, will give you a distance of, uh, so that's gonna be 16 plus 10, which is 26 inches. And now for the area, remember for area, we need to find the base and multiply that by the height. Now, since they give me this base right here of eight, and they give me a perpendicular line to that going to the other base of four, I'm gonna use that as the base and the height. So eight times four. So my area will be eight times four. And ladies and gentlemen, eight times four will give me an area of 32 uh, inches squared. Now, when you submit that on Schoology, just put the number, don't put the units. Uh, just put the number, don't put the units, no commas. Obviously, if you have decimals, you need to use decimals. Uh, but as far as the units, you don't have to use the units. Uh, let's try a different example. For example, this one uh, here on the side, number four. So again, if I'm looking for the perimeter, perimeter, ladies and gentlemen, is the distance around. So I need to, anything that's inside doesn't matter right now. So I don't need this right now. If I'm looking for the perimeter, I need uh, the distance around. So I have 90. So this is going to be 90 as well, 100 and 100. So that would be 100 and 100. So that's 200 plus 90 plus 90 is 180. So it'd be 380 feet. 100 plus 100 is 200 plus 90 is uh, 290 plus another 90 is 380 feet. That is the perimeter distance around. But if I'm finding the area, remember area, so I'm gonna rewrite the formula, is equal to the base times the height. So what is the base? Uh, so notice that I'm given this distance from this base to this base. So because I'm given 90 feet between these two bases, I'm gonna treat this as the height because remember the height is the shortest distance between the bases. So think of it as a parallelogram that's been put on its side. So the base is going to be 90, 90, and the height, the distance between the bases, the shortest distance, how do I know it's the shortest distance? Because it is perpendicular to the base will be 90, so 90 times 90. So that means that the area would have to be 8,100 feet squared or square feet. But that's what I would put on school you. No commas, nothing like that. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, and and uh, again, I encourage you guys to, uh, to uh, um, rewind it, watch it again if you need to, uh, or come and ask me any questions if you need any more help. But with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next time.